what would be especially useful for you today in our conversation? So since we're dealing with the personal statement, um, I wanted to talk about, um, for those of us who are older and we're not young, um, how can we minimize our personal statement into a three-page paper? Um, given the fact that a lot of us, like for, it, for instance, for me, I've worked for the federal government for like since 2004. So how can I like put it in order of like, how do we categorize what's important and say kind of like was really not that important for the end. So say for instance, for me, I was a single mom. I'm a single mom. My son is 19 years old. So I want to list what I've gone through in the beginning. And then like, do I put for the second part, the reason why I'm interested in this particular school? And then third, I list like for me being a federal government employee, my public service and how being at this particular law school, um, that it can work in favor with me since being in public service and the um, courses or the, um, the major that I'm, I'm trying to um, put together, it will work hand in hand. And then like, how do I actually close my personal statement? Do I reiterate what was already in the first part or just give another par small paragraph for the ending? These are all great questions and they're common ones. I think part of the issue here is that the job of the personal statement is not to list all of your work or everything you've done up to this point or your entire life's journey. You can include a lot of that on your resume. The resume is the place to have in reverse chronological order your major academic and career experiences. Okay. But the personal statement is your opportunity to go deep on one particular area, not to mention everything you've done. So your personal statement will not mention a lot of things that are impressive and that you want law schools to know. It's just the nature right. of the beast. I mean, you said three pages. I actually recommend two. So you've really, you've two really pages? got, yeah, yeah, I know. So you've really got to cut things down and keep it concise. And oh my gosh. It's, a, it's a big impulse for applicants to want to cover everything and not leave anything out. But inevitably, you will have to leave something out. You can't compress an entire lifetime up to this point in an entire application, unfortunately, and certainly not in just your personal statements. You may want to pick one thing to focus on in your personal statement, and then you do have another essay or two where you could cover another one or two things, but again, it still won't be everything. Okay. So how do I also work diversity statements Okay, so for me being an African-American woman, I come from middle class. So, I mean, I went through the struggles because I was a single mom, but how can I or should I write a diversity statement if I really never faced certain particular things in life? Sure. So you don't have to focus on obstacles you've overcome in the diversity statement. That's certainly a common thing to do, but okay. rather it's more about what your unique background brings to the table. So you talked about being a single mother. You talked about working for the federal government. Those may, have, those, those may give you unique perspectives you could bring to a law school classroom. And if you search a little bit more, you may find that there are some struggles you faced. I imagine being a single mother isn't an easy thing to do, especially no. while you're working. And so- yeah. Those are obstacles. You may not have faced every single obstacle that any African-American woman out there has, but there are still some that you have faced and you can right. focus on those. So also can I, with the diversity statement, um, maybe in the workforce, um, I can list probably age has been something because I've always been the youngest in a department and it has been that, oh, you don't know much because you're young. So can I list that in a diversity statement that I've battled with um, senior um, people in a department minimizing me because of my youthfulness? Yeah, you certainly can. Can I use that? Okay. Yeah, the important thing to remember, though, is that 
you don't want this to be a laundry list of hardships you had. You don't want it to become a pity party. It's rather you can mention those things, but then use them as jumping off points to share what you've learned from the experience and how that will shape you going forward. Okay. So can I also list that what I have struggled and gone through is the reason why I've chose to be in this particular major or this field of law that I have chosen because of the hardship. So say for instance, being a single mother. Now, my what I want to do is entertainment um, law. But like if that doesn't work, I always did like family law. So because I was a single mom, maybe I can focus more so like on um, family law with child support and all of that because I've never received any. Um, during the 19 years of my son being on this God great earth. So it's like, can I like close with the ending of what this has done for me? This has caused me to be more motivated in life, caused me to like be an advocate for single moms. You know, like, is that something I can use in a diversity statement? You certainly can. And that sounds like a fantastic topic. Okay. Okay. So I would include some things about your unique personal background in the diversity statement, and then maybe pick the biggest thing that you want to go deep on for your personal statement, because the personal statement should typically be a little bit longer than the diversity statement. Right, yeah. And the thing about it is just condensing it to two pages, because I've already got it like to three pages, but to make it at two pages is for... Now, with the font, th is that important? <laughs> I mean, because... If you want it to be two, I guess what the minimum is like, what, 12? Yeah, so I mean, don't play any tricks with the margins. Don't play any tricks with the word count. Obviously, cutting it down requires a lot of tough decisions. So right. that's where it may help to have someone other than yourself helping you with right. this. Ideally, your rough draft should be long. It should be maybe right. 1,500 words. And then mm -hmm. just chop it down bit by bit. Take out every unnecessary sentence every unnecessary detail so that at the end, your final draft is jam-packed full of what really counts. Okay. And another thing with personal statements. So um, can we mention like what's on the law school page? Can we use that as a reference of why we want to be a part of this particular law school? So say yeah. for instance, the Dean mentioned something in his statement that like works together with what, why you want to be at this particular school. Can we list that in there? And do we quote the source or do we just um, kind of like rearrange the words and that's it? I would mention it briefly, maybe, but okay. definitely don't use quotes. That just takes up too much valuable space. Right. And you also don't want to tell them all about why they're great. It's really more about what unique characteristics of the school make you want to go there specifically. So if you want to work on family law and they have a unique program in family law or a unique mm -hmm. clinic of some kind or other extracurricular, that could be a thing to mention. Right. Cause I did see like in the personal statement that I've been doing, like what I saw, uh, I took a sentence of what the Dean said and it worked perfect. Like with why I want to be there. So they have like, they do clinical law. They have people who are not fortunate to hire attorneys. So they use law students or those who like in their third or fourth year. And I thought that was like something like, this is what I wanted to do, like to actually get in and see what it's like. So I mentioned it in the, in the personal statement, take what is already mentioned, but kind of like put it in with what I'm saying because it's like what I wanted to do. As far as like, for example, they have like, you know, clinical working and, you know, actually going to court and, you know, just helping out and assisting, so. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's definitely worth doing. Okay. But, okay. Personal statements. Okay. Now, another thing with a personal statement, should we mention, is it wrong to mention that alumni who have gone to this particular school that has, like, given you the confirmation of why this particular law school is great? So say, for instance, um, I spoke to Stephen about this law school because he was a president of the law school there. And by me talking to him, really confirmed that this is the, the school of why I wanted to be here. Is that possible or should you just leave people's names out? No, I think that's a great thing to include. 
okay. any personal connection you have with the school, any direct connection yes. you have with the school shows that you're especially likely to choose them if they accept you. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Excellent, Rashida. I'm really glad I was able to help. What would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, from our call today is basically um, with personal statements. You have to really be strategic about what you want to put in there. And things are already listed on your resume, so you don't have to go back and reiterate the same thing that's already on your resume. Um, do a draft. And if you have 1,500 words, start cutting down. Let other people view your work. Um, also, with a diversity statement, don't make it like a pity party. Um, add some struggle things, but also make it a positive thing of how you were able to come out and um, the experience that you have with life and the road that it's put you on. And also, too, it, that you can include people that has been um, like alumni members um, in your personal statement. Awesome. Great. Well, I think you're on your path now. Please keep in touch and let me know if you need anything as you move forward. Great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Take care. Thanks. You too. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes.